Hi everybody, today's video is all about the two categories of cross-cultural exchange activities that J-1 visa teachers are federally required to fulfill yearly. We'll talk about the two categories next, how often the J-1 visa teachers are required to do these activities. I will also share with you activity ideas for each category and then we'll answer the question what can you do now while you are in the philippines to help you do these activities with ease when you are already in the u.s and finally we will talk about the consequences for not completing these activities if you have already received and have accepted your job offer it will help you a lot to know these things as early as now some teachers had difficulty creating activities due to lack of resources and means stick around till the end for tips please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already hit the like and notification buttons as well i also have a facebook page and i want to invite you guys to like and follow me there so we can chat and you can join me on my facebook live to answer your questions real time the link to my facebook page is in the description box below all right, let's get into it. One of the original purposes of the visitor exchange program is to affect a cultural exchange that will allow American students to know more about other countries and to help educators in your country to know more about your teaching strategies, training, and implementation. You are expected as a J-1 teacher to implement cross-cultural activities in your school and community. All visa sponsors have the responsibility to communicate, enforce, and monitor the compliance of participating teachers to this requirement. Here's an overview. You must be involved in activities that are for the purpose of sharing the language, culture, or history of your home country with Americans. Of course, such activities must not interfere with your instruction or completion of the program. Every J-1 teacher must complete during the academic school year one or more activity of each of the following cross-cultural categories. Category A is an activity for the classroom, school, or school district designed to give an overview of the history, traditions, heritage, cultural, economy, educational system, etc. of his or her home country. Category B is an activity that involves U.S. student dialogue with schools or students in the exchange teacher's home country. I got this information from the website of one of the visa sponsors. So what this means is that you must conduct at least one activity for both categories, A and B, and this is each school year while you are in the program. Please remember to ask permission from your school admin first before you propose the activity to your visa sponsors. You must also ask the students if they want to participate. Here are some of the things I have done during my participation. So let's go over first um, category A. For year one, I chose to do an activity that involved just my students. I designated a portion of one of my bulletin boards in the classroom that I decorated with things related to the Philippines. Also, every Thursday, instead of the usual bell work, I would share a YouTube video about the Philippines. Here are some of the videos I showed them. Street food. They definitely had wide-eyed, open-mouth reactions with what Filipinos eat, such as that day-old chick, the Betamax, chicken head, etc. Many of them said they looked delicious. OPM, I showed them Casey Tandingan's Wish video where she did a cover of Tadhana by Abdharma Down. This was a hit since it's an R&B song that many of my students loved. Sport, I showed them a compilation of Sepak Takraw matches of Philippines versus other countries in the SEA Games. They said the game looked like the players were doing Kung Fu and they said that it was very cool. Hospitality. I showed a video of Nas Daily highlighting Filipino hospitality. For year two, I did an activity with my colleagues in the math department and the teachers at our hallway. Of course, I also invited the admins and those who were available to participate. I scheduled the activity on a Wednesday when we did not have any seminar. Wednesday in our district is a short day, so students are in classes until 1 10 p.m. only but teachers are required to stay until 2 40 so i had enough time then to have my cross-cultural activity 
with them. So that's one of the things you must consider when you are planning your activity if they involve your colleagues and admins. Make sure to not schedule it on busy weeks such as when grades are due. For year three, there was a school-wide multicultural event at our school, so we Filipinos definitely took advantage of this and showcased our food. We ordered chicken and pork adobo, steamed rice, lumpiang Shanghai, and pancit. We each contributed to cover the cost. We were lucky that there's a Filipino restaurant near us in Orlando. It's actually popular there among Filipinos and Americans who are familiar with our cuisine. We also had our table with displays and posters, etc. We were also wearing our national costumes. For year four, this was during COVID-19 pandemic where classes were done virtually. So I just also shared videos to my students. The visa sponsors, of course, understand that the cross-cultural activity can only be done virtually. On to year five, I collaborated with other EPI teachers and we did our cross-cultural activity at a park. We invited American friends and those who were in the park to join us. We prepared popular sweet foods and sang karaoke. A lot of teachers do collabs with other EPI teachers from other schools, so you can definitely organize something like that too. They performed folk dances and OPM songs and of course shared food and displays as well while everyone's wearing traditional Filipino attire such as barong, barotsaya, kimona, etc. Due to more teachers being involved in the activity, you can expect more challenging logistics, but it would definitely have a bigger impact if done correctly with proper planning and efficient communications. However, since the group will have to choose just one school as the venue for the activity, it would mean that the other teacher's schools will have limited access to the event, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm sure there's a way to make sure that this challenge can be addressed. If you're liking my content so far, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like, share, and notification bell buttons. I also have a Facebook page, again, that you can like and follow. Now, here are some of the things I did for category B. Again, this category involves American students and students from your home country. Of course, band polls would be ideal for this requirement, but it should not be limited to letters alone. Encourage the exchange of emails, PowerPoints, slides, family photos, even Zoom contacts. How I personally did this was by contacting friends back home who were also teachers. I would ask them if they might be interested in having their students do a cross-cultural activity with my own students. I did a postcard exchange one time, so I bought US postcards and have asked those who volunteered to participate to write a message on the postcard for the Filipino students that had been assigned to them. My students were really excited. I just gave them a writing prompt so that it will not be difficult for them to think of what to write. I sent money to the teacher in the Philippines to buy Philippine postcards for my students and she sent it back to me with the messages from her own students already. It was a fun activity. I ordered the US postcards on Amazon. I actually still have a lot of them left with me. Your visa sponsor will be required to collect from every teacher annually reports that detail the teacher's cross-cultural activity components. Some visa sponsors would set a specific due date for each category. Each report should include the following information. First, the teacher's full name, school with location, and of course, the visa sponsor. Second, a date of every activity as outlined above. Third, location of the activity, so that's the school, community, the classroom, etc. Four is the audience and participants in the activity. How many teachers and students will be participating or will be involved? Fifth topic of the activity along with its purpose and general design. And the last one is the estimation of the success or impact of the activity. So how often are J1 visa teachers required to do these activities? Once for each category each school year. As for EPI, category A must be completed during the first semester around November, while category B must be completed during the second semester around April each year. If you are an EPI teacher, there will be a section in your account where you can turn in your proposals. They will check it and will email the teacher about any revisions they would require and if the proposed activities are approved. 
Once approved, the teacher can go ahead with his or her plan. Then the teacher will also complete a section where they will describe the impact of the activity. The teachers are also encouraged to share photos and videos if they want to, but these are not required during my time. I'm not really sure if they are required nowadays. Again, just a reminder, make sure to first ask permission from your school if it's an activity that will involve students or teachers. But like I said, category A is not limited to activities done in school. You can also do activities in your neighborhood, at your church, at a park like what we did, etc. What can you do now while you are in the Philippines to help you do these things with ease when you are already in the U.S.? Since doing a cross-cultural activity is a requirement, and since you already have an idea what you can do for this one, you might want to consider. First, including a pair of traditional Filipino attire, accessories, and novelty items when you pack your stuff. Ordering these online can be very expensive. Next, take lots of photos and videos that you can show to your students in the U.S., especially those that might not be popular and so are not accessible online. Although there are videos and photos that are available online, showing photos and videos you have taken yourself will add a personal touch to it. It is even better if you're in these photos and videos. Make sure that they are good quality photos and videos, obviously. Third, take some Philippine money with you in different denominations. And last suggestion would be you may also bring flags. The size would depend on how you plan to use your flag. As for me, I brought one that I could display in the classroom. So now, what will happen if you do not comply with this and other requirements? Participants from all programs and occupations are expected to abide by the rules guiding their program and immigration status. Failure to do so may lead to your J-1 visa's early termination, and once terminated by your visa sponsor, you cannot appeal this. So this is it for me today. Please check out my channel for videos you might be interested in. Thank you for watching today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!